Hello, why not you're listening and welcome to Raw 4X, where we are in the Soul System as United Earth with the Galactic Future Party in charge of our future. And we're going to be focusing today on actually figuring out what's outside the solar system. We're going to look into a grav survey craft and uh, jump points. Now, before I do that, there is one thing I want to do, and that is that these events right now, as they pop up, I have to quickly try to scan through them to see what's important. Um, we're going to go in here. This is just a little tip. We can go, hey, this one here, research complete. That's really important. That's actually the one that stops time going forward. It's like, hey, you want to do something? Uh, we're going to highlight this. So we're going to go text color. And I'm going to select uh, bright green. And now when that comes up, it will be like, hey, bright green. I'll be like, cool, I should engage with that. Other stuff I could say I could hide. I could be like, I don't want to see this. Hide that event if I wanted. Um, like I could say I don't want to see bonuses on people as they go up. Honestly, yes, we should probably hide that. There'll be a lot of those. Commander experience we don't want to see. Uh, new ground force officer. Um, again, probably don't need to see that at event. And retirement as well. Just because we're going to have a lot of officers, and as much as it might be nice to see some of them, um, if it was like a story character, there's no way to just filter for that. So I'm going to say we're going to get rid of all those events just to leave it at, you know, the important ones so they grab our attention. I could pull up the event log all the time. Um, we have limited space, so no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, right. Grav survey craft. Let's do that. We go over here. We're going to new ship class. And this is going to be the Sophie set. And you are going to be a gravitational survey craft or vessel. Except we're going to make one that is dual function. Because I'm lazy. Uh, it will be able to both survey for jump points. And then when it gets into a new system, survey for minerals. It will be a geological survey vessel. So because it will do both, I'm actually going to call it an exploration ship. Exploration cruiser? Eh, no, exploration ship. Right. Um, easy job here. We're going to chuck on a geological survey sensor, a gravitational survey sensor, and a science department, which basically increases the survey points per hour by plus one, I believe. It doesn't say that here, but it does have that effect, I think. Um, it also means that you'll need a science officer. That's really cool. I like that. So, um, that done. It should double the speed of our surveying. It is going to be 100 tons, but eh. Now, this is going to be a military vessel. It has geo and gravitational service sensors. These are military. So we could actually do a few things. Like we could have a thermal sensor, a EM sensor, an active grav sensor, which all of which would be actually be quite helpful. Um, first things though, we're going to need to talk about how long this is going to be out there, how long it's going to be surveying, and how big an engine we're going to need. Now, this ship is going to be about 7,000, maybe 8,000 tons. It's going to need a pretty beefy engine that's going to be very efficient because for starters it's going to be at the royal it'll need to be efficient for fuel but the second part it's a ship that does a lot of traveling like the entire point of the ship is it goes to the next grav point to the next mineral point to the next grav point to the next mineral point like it's constantly going to be moving except when it's surveying so it's going to be traveling a lot and it's not going to have a chance to really do much other than just constantly move. So the faster it moves, the faster it will conduct its survey overall. Um, so it's going to be a pretty big engine. It's also going to need a jump drive. And our jump drive tech is actually pretty terrible. So I'm actually going to fire up um, something new here. And this is A4X calc jar. It is very helpful. It's also, you know, a little bit complicated, but whatever. Uh, so we're going to say, uh, what's our technology? Our technology is improved nuclear pulse. Our minimum boost is 0.3. Our maximum power doesn't matter for this. It's going to be slow. Max engine size is 60. Fuel efficiency, we're on 0.9. Our armor is composite armor, I believe, right? Uh, yes, composite. Jump drive is the minimum, so four. Squadron size, the minimum. Jump radius, the minimum. 
Cloaking, we don't have. Um, we don't care about that. We won't be using that. So. And now, now it knows our text. We can say, hey, our desired tonnage is going to be like 7,000 tons. Um, armor calculation for one. Jump drive. Yes, please calculate me a jump drive. Desired speed. Uh, it's going to be military. I don't mind... Uh, how big the max engine of fuel is. So let's just say 99. Let's see if that does anything. Okay. So it's now calculated and it's saying, okay, sure. If you want this to go 3000 kilometers per second, your jump drive is going to need to be 35 hull size, which is 7,000 tons. That's fine. Um, you also will need an engine Oof. Oof. Yeah. That engine is not particularly efficient. And that's because our desired range is really low. Now, here's our actual issue. Although this is a military vessel, there is a difference between a military vessel and a military engine. We mentioned this very, very early on, and it wasn't really important back then. But a military engine is any engine over 50% engine power. We actually want to go really low on our power so that we can have a really efficient engine. So I'm actually going to say be a commercial engine. We're going to say desired speed of 1,500. And then we're going to say our desired range is going to be huge. Like, I want this to be, sure, 500 billion kilometers. And now we're talking much more our kind of speed. You'll see that we've got an engine that is in the region of 25 hull size, which is what, like just below a thousand tons? What? Uh, what is this hull size? The hull size is what, 50? Oh, it's just over. It's 1,250 tons. Yes, that's right. Uh, its power is 0.3. So 30% power. Yeah, that sounds about right. The fuel, half a million liters. Okay, that's all reasonable. And then you'll notice that the jump drive is now a commercial jump drive. That's because, uh, unlike in previous versions, your jump drive doesn't care about what you are as a ship. We're military. It cares about what your engine is. Your jump drive needs to be commercial if your engine is commercial. If your engine is military, your jump drive needs to be military. Yes, it's complicated that your ship is military, but your engine and jump drive aren't. But that's the way it is. So this is pretty useful, actually. We now know that, hey, our engine needs to be roughly, and we're talking roughly, you know, it could be up to 40 in size or whatever, 30. That's great. I'm actually going to just move this over here for now. And we are going to design tech. And very first thing we do, we're going to go down to our jump engine. And we're going to say this is a commercial jump engine. And you'll see that max ship size is 22,500 tons. Uh, we're going to need to lower that, so we're going to lower the jump size until we hit 7,000. Done. We could even go to 8,000 if we really cared. Leave it 7. Although, we do need to also figure out um, maintenance and stuff. Leave it 7,000 for now. And we are going to... Robsav and Seraph. Of course, the first jump drive the United Earth would be made by two great houses working together because it is a big task. Makes sense. We're going to just instant this. Bam, bam, bam. Refresh tech. Jump drive. Done. And that leaves us with, what, like 3,600 tons. Now, bear in mind that if we add an engine, People are going to need to be added to work on the engine and supplies and maintenance, etc. So this is going to get a little bit like dicey. But if we have a look at our ship planner, um, have we mentioned how long we want you to be out for? Oh, minimum number of engines one. Whoops, that needs to be changed. I only want one engine. Not in this ship. We don't need anything fancy here. Yeah, notice that the engines actually got larger. And also more powerful. I don't really care about the speed that much. Like the speed could go down for all I really care here. Efficiency is what matters. Whoops. Might be worth making the ship bigger to begin with. 
Yeah, let's go to a slightly bigger format. So we're going to get rid of this jump drive. I have made this jump drive, but I'm going to immediately mark it as obsolete just because we're going to use a different one. Um, you can prototype. That's the thing that's new in C Sharp. You can be like, let's prototype this jump drive and you can add a prototype component to like compare and contrast. And But again, it's a lot of fiddling around that I don't want to deal with. So I'm just going to design tech. We're going to go down to our jump drive again. And we're going to say all of you are good, except for you. We're going to make that Robsav and Seraph. And then we're going to go to, let's say, 8,000 tons. That's the max size. It can be a little less. So we'll instant that. We'll run the numbers again at 8,000 tons. Yeah, looking at much better kind of stats now. Right. Uh, refresh tech. And the jump drive. Okay, uh, we want our deployment time to be this is 10 years at the moment. That's fine. We're going to need to adjust a lot of things anyway. Having a look at this, we could run a more efficient engine. It would be a bit bigger. Ask could we get this to go? Could we go to go like... If we got 0.4 with a 60 engine, yes. How long would that be out for? It doesn't say. I, I kind of want to know how long that ship will be out. Does it say anywhere? Does it say range or anything? No? Okay. Uh, right. Let's design tech. Engine. I'm going to crank this power way down. And then... This would be a 3,000 ton engine. I don't think we'd have enough space in that remaining 1,000 tons. But you never know. So you know what? We're going to company name. Sharu and Devaran. Makes sense. It is a pretty big and pretty new engine. So we're going to instant this. over there for now. Fresh tech. Oh, we actually had one already, which is the Haley, which we use. Um, yeah, it doesn't make sense to have the second one. We're actually going to... Sorry, Shura and Devaran. We are going to reject your design. We already had the Haley. doesn't make sense to have multiple because they're the same. Uh, the Haley takes us to... Well, that's pretty good. The speed isn't as good as it could be. The range is fantastic, though. Look at that range. That's almost 10 years of range right there. Let's check what this says after we change up the maintenance. Because obviously this, this is not going to last very long at all. Um, maintenance storage. Large maintenance storage bay is 250 tons. Okay. And like to give it a little bit of leeway, go 12 years in the maintenance life and 10 years on deployment time. So it's going to aim for 10 years. That does give us leeway to play with. So let's run the numbers. What if we made the engine more powerful? Makes it faster. It can do more surveying. Ooh, we use almost three times the amount of fuel. A little faster. Hmm, we could make it a little faster. We could cut its deployment time to eight years. And go for the faster Shura and Devar and drive this. Yeah, that makes sense. We're gonna... I like the idea that we kind of were like, you know, we could go with the Haley, but we're actually going to go with the Shura and Devar and on the basis of they've developed a slightly more um, powerful drive, though it does massively cut our range. Oh, whoops. Um, we want to go with the 
fuel, 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 fuel storage, and done. Uh, we're going to cut the deployment time to 96 months. And maintenance life is 10 years. We're going for eight, uh, eight years. That's fine. Uh, range is... I want to say it's about seven years. Is it maybe six? No, it's, seven, it's about seven, eight years. That seems fine to me. Especially because we are going to be stopped. We're going to be above, you know moons and stuff surveying them so that's fine uh and we're pretty much almost at 8,000 tons exactly we're two tons lower in fact we're bang on 1,500 kilometers per second that seems really good to me okay I like the fact they quote an explosion chance. That's four percent chance of exploding. That's great. Thank you. Uh, right. The only issue is potentially the maintenance. I'm always a little bit touchy about that, just in case something does explode. Or in the instance of this, its jump drive breaks and it can't get back home. That would be my fear. Um, we could add a. Fighter maintenance bay. It's three tons. We've only got two tons to play with. It doesn't really work. Yeah, I think this is probably going to do. The Sophie Set class exploration ship. And we're going to pop over to here. And we're going to have to come up with a name for all of these. Periodic table? Sure. Elements from the periodic table. Now, I kind of want to give you a prefix so that we have all of them grouped together because we're probably going to be running these. I'm going to call you Gen 1. So it will be called Gen 1 Plutonium, Gen 1 Sodium, etc. Um, we could just shorten that to G1. Is there anything else we need to do? No. Okay. Let's lock that design. We're going to go to our shipyard. We're going to tell you to retool, which you need to refresh for. I could close the thing. Or I could just fast forward time by five seconds. Uh, retool for the Sophie set, and that will be completed June this year. That's not the building the actual thing, though. Bear in mind. It's just retooling for it. Okay. That's said and done. We're going to fast forward to time. Oh, one thing we can do is we do have automated mines on Wolf. Where is Wolf? I feel I'm missing something. Uh, oh, Wolf is here. Right. So, because of that, we should probably put someone in charge of Wolf. Administrators. Now, obviously Wolf doesn't have ground construction or anything. It just has mining. So we're going to find someone who's really good at mining. Um, the governor of Earth is the best at mining. We're not going to send you to Wolf. That would be kind of mean. Um, we're probably going to want to send someone like Archie Vandermeege or something like that. Wow, you've got pretty decent stats overall. Uh, Archie or Morgan. Talented musician. Agreeable. Oh, developed a serious medical problem. Yeah, we won't send you. Okay, Archie, please head over to Wolf. Our first governor of a extraplanetary body is Archie Vandermeege. Um... Out of interest, Archie, you are a administration rank three. You needed to be a minimum one for this posting, so good job there. Earth is a five. Oh, used to be a three. Earth's gone up in the world. Hmm. Nice. Right, we're going to close it down. And if we have a quick look over in our shipyard... 
your retooling is going to take uh, oh, quite a while longer. Ugh. Okay. All right, fast forward as it is. Right. We've retooled for the Sophie set. Construct the Thulium, which will be completed mid next year. The Cyborgium, the Cesium, and the Osmium. Seems good to me. And notice that we've got used components checked. So they will be using those uh, Geo Survey. Where are they? Oh, piles. Geological Survey sensors. They've gone from six to two. Uh, I didn't bother putting any thermal, EM, or active sensors on these ships. And you could say that's because you forgot to, and you might be right, but it also could be because I only had two tons left, and they would really need to be, you know, a few tons to be actually useful. So it could be that. Just saying, it could be. Um, I wonder how small a thermal sensor or like an EM sensor can we design? Five tons. Yeah. Now it wouldn't fit. As much as that would be lovely. You know what? We could make it fit. Again, I'm going to be using my uh, space admin powers to be able to just adjust this, but whatever. Um, we just want a basic thermal sensor. Nothing too fancy. And this will allow us to detect if there are enemy ships nearby. Although admittedly, it's going to be so not powerful they'll need to be literally right next door and next door or if there are people on a planet again we'll need to be right above the planet that sort of thing like it will tell us if someone's next to us without this we're not going to know if anyone's nearby at all and literally like unless they start knocking on the hull so uh we're gonna make a company name uh ram tam tam sensor systems okay seems nice to me uh, instant that bam five tons we're gonna make, make a few adjustments so exploration ship unlock design I go down and refresh our tech. Add that. Oh, we're three tons over. This is terrible. Well, what if we happen to cut like one month off our deployment? We're literally the same weight. Done. And there shouldn't be a problem here. Okay, we've built five future planet cargo ships, which is lovely because our greys are going to be busy for quite a while. Which is fine. It's just they're going to be busy for quite a while. Over here. How are we doing with our infrastructure? Yeah, there's like loads of infrastructure backed up. So we're going to grab our new cargo fleet. Again, I want to leave the empty cargo fleet just to dump ships into. This is five future plants. So we're going to rename you to... And there we go. And then I think we probably just want to move on infrastructure for now. Like, we're going to need to make this possible for a lot of people to live there. Um, I will say we also will want to grab infrastructure to take to Titan. So Europa and Titan, definitely ones we need to push. So we're going to load infrastructure. We're going to go to Europa. We're going to unload all installations. We're going to go to Earth, refuel, load infrastructure, unload, refuel, and then do that. There's 10 of you. You each hold 10. Uh, we do it nine times. We'd get a thousand. Um, I think we're going to do this 19 times, so 20 in total. So we'll get 2,000 infrastructure on each. That way, the three Jovian moons will have 1,000 except for Europa, which will have three, and Titan will have two. Sure. That's going to take three years. We are going to have some more, you know, ships be made. Um, we're probably going to put them together or whatever, but whatever. Uh, we're going to make those extra freighters now. So, hi. I would like you to into the colony sheet, uh, cargo fleet make more future planets one two three four five and your retooling will be done at the end of the year okay 
both these sets, you are being built. Okay. Carry on. Okay. We made our engines more efficient. Which is great. We've already got a load of engines being built right now, but whatever. Um, research. Power of propulsion. The important thing is to make sure that's ready for our next gen. So we probably even want to go to the 0.7. Okay, we retool for the Sapphire Ebony. Which means we're going to instantly start building Sapphire Ebonies. And they're going to go into the colony fleet. Aha! We have built our Grav Survey Vessels and more future planets. Uh, we should probably de deal with the future planets first. And I realize I also haven't assigned them commanders. So, like, they literally don't have a commanding officer. Oh, no, they do! Okay, sweet. I did assign them commanding officers. Excellent, I didn't totally forget. Oh, no, I did. I did. The future planets don't have a commanding officer. Yay! Whoops. Uh, right, okay. Let's refresh. Cargo fleet. And you were going to rename to future planet times five. And um, give you the mark two. We do need to put people in charge of them. We're going to worry about that in a minute. Um, we also probably want to do something with mining. Now, the question is, do we want to send more mines over to Wolf? Uh, wrong one. Mining. There we go. A lot of neutronium. We could do with that. What were the other things in the solar system that were particularly interesting to us? And what are we going to have issues with on Earth? Uh, geranium. Well, we're going to get that from the places we're setting up now. So, you know what? Let's go to Wolf and get more neutronium. So, you, I want to take another, what, 50? So, another 10 trips to Wolf. So, load installation. Automated mine. We've got loads. 68. Admittedly, that's not going to take long. Yeah, it's going to take a half a year to do that. So, sure. Oh, we're actually losing a lot of money right now. Um, whoops. We should do something about that. I don't know what we should do about it. But we should definitely do something about it. Construction factories. How are we doing here? Mm, iffy. Might need to slow down our mining, but I don't know if we can slow down the mining. Uh, the money is a bit of a problem. Anyway, that's something we have to deal with later. First things first. I would like to go to our survey fleet. Standing orders. We're going to... Oh, no, actually, I actually don't do it from here. That will cause us to um, make mistakes. So we're going to move everyone up here. There we go. Then we're going to give you standing orders. We would like you to. Um, do you want a graph survey or geo survey as a priority? Probably graph survey. So, we would like you to survey next three system locations, and then once you've done all the graph surveying, survey next. Five system bodies. Sure. Uh, when your fuel gets less than 20%, refuel. And when your supply gets to less than 20%, refuel, resupply, and overhaul. That seems like a pretty good plan. Okay. First things first, go to Earth and divide into single ships. And that should instantly send all four of them out into the wider world. And let's just skip forward an hour. Yep, they've divided into single ships. Skip for three hours. They're going to go do their graph survey. And we should see them. There we go. Shooting off to go do their thing. We probably can speed this up to like days, etc. Do we want to produce more of these? You know what? Probably. Let's go to our shipyards. 
again. Go to the survey fleet. Let's get the radium, the silver, the tantalum, and the rhodium. Okay. Notice that they're having to go a pretty far way out. Like we're talking like the Ring of Neptune here. Oh, and the Osmium has discovered a new jump point in Sol already. We're not going to go through it just yet. We're going to keep looking for new jump points. But we have found, ooh, that's two jump points now. Thulium discovered one. Ah, that's what I was going to do. We're going to definitely have to assign um, some officers to these ships. Whoops, should have done that already. Uh, we would like to... Um, military ships. There we go. Probably survey. And then engineering would be like the next one we'd want. Okay. Minimum rank is commander. So knights aren't allowed. So we're looking for a minimum rank of commander. Commander Andrew Elf is going to be in charge of the Cesium. The Samantha Turin is in charge of the Osmium. The Commodore Isabel Borealis in charge of the Cyborgium. And the Dragon Man is going to be in charge of the Sophie set. And then we're going to assign um, science officers, which I believe... Sophie Akarin, your science officer on the Cesium. Void Singer, the Osmium. Seraph, Cyborgium. And Vigilo Akarin to the Thulium. Awesome. And then we're just going to automate assignments because that will then assign everyone to. We need to maybe hit like eight hours or something. Five days. Yeah, the future planets, which, again, not worried about manually assigning them. I will turn off automated assignments now, though, just for the first few. Kind of fun to give them, you know, go to this important survey ship that is going to go out for the first time in forever. Okay, uh, one of our fleets is done. We also have an inactive research lab. Okay. Um, Start the ball on terraforming. Sure, we'll get you a bit of uh, work going. Bow strain. And then we need to do something with our second fleet. You're going to be busy for another couple of years. That's fine. We could start moving mines over, but those mines they wouldn't be doing anything. Whereas right now they're still working on Earth, so it probably isn't worth us doing that. Hmm. Might be better off just sitting there for now. Or we could, you know, maybe move infrastructure or something. Yeah, let's move a little bit of infrastructure. We'll go to like IO with it. Um, load installation. Infrastructure. That will see uh, the policy of the current ruling government. And they are only going to be in government for a little bit longer. So we'll load infrastructure from Earth. We'll go to IO. We'll unload all installations and and we'll do that what nine times um no not nine times it's five of you which means you'll be moving 50 at a time we want to do that or a thousand so we want to do that 19 times okay a couple of them complaining hey we don't have more things to uh, geo survey and that's because the last few are taken we've just built what, two more only two more why only two more? Why were the others running behind? Did we run out of production or something? No? Hmm. Why are you running late? Oh! We ran out of geo survey sensors, didn't we? So we have to build the geo survey sensors. These two. Makes sense. Oh, hello. Notice that there has been a failure here. Repairs have been carried out. 
Okay. Um, who is still doing research? Thulium is still doing research. Okay. Um, I'm going to have the others go back to Earth. Do a little, like, bit of a shimmy, a little bit of an overhaul. Get themselves ready. Okay. And I think the Thulium also is now done. So we're going to say, hey, refuel and resupply and begin overhaul. It was a very short tour of duty, admittedly. And... We also have the survey fleet down here of four more. Now, again, I don't want to give them orders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a fleet that is orbiting Earth. And I'm going to just drop them in. And then I'll give you the order of attaching to single ships. Uh, however, you are overhauling right now. So I can't do that. It will once it's overhauled that'll be fine um we've also completed a research what gonna do next what do we work on the next tier of engine which will be the ion drive which is a good tier to kind of start slowing down at but we do need it so yeah we'll continue going up that route I think we will maybe slow down a touch because we do need to start on other things like defending ourselves, military weapons. Um, mm. Let's on to the new armor. Okay. Um, I'm going to just fast forward a little bit until right, you've done that. Movement order. Earth. Divide into single ships. Okay, you're still undergoing an overhaul. You're still undergoing an overhaul. Oh, we completed our research into construction rate. That's lovely. Still undergoing an overhaul. Um, what were you doing? Construction rate. Notice how it's a nice blue. Uh, not blue. Green. I can tell colors. What do I want to work on next? Shipbuilding rate, maybe. Uh, wealth generation. Yeah, our wealth is negative. Admittedly, it's getting better, but we do need to work on wealth generation. So we're going to get that 45% buff. Quite nice. Can't go too far. This is the year we're meant to have an election, so... Come on, if you've done your overhaul, you're still overhauling. There we go. Uh, and then we're going to give you movement order, Earth. And uh, divide fleet into single ships. Yep, there we go. And then, boop. We now have our individual ships. And we have three jump points out of the solar system. One, two... Three. This one's actually very close in. That's a bit of a danger. That was a little bit further out, which offers its own danger. We might not detect anyone coming through it. This one, though, they are very close to Earth. In fact, yeah, I would consider that, like, very dangerously close. It's not quite a normal missile range, but you could easily make a missile that would go that distance. It's not the normal range for missiles. I consider normal range for missiles under 100 million kilometers. Um, tends to be about 60 million, but yeah, 100 million is certainly the, the normal kind of like, this is where you start to get into engagement range. 300 is totally possible though. But yeah, I don't like the idea that they can just take a short jaunt out of this jump point and they'd be able to fire on our population. This jump point is going to be a problem. If there's anyone dangerous beyond it. There might not be. We could get lucky. Uh, however, this is a good place for us to go to an election cycle. So, I guess... I'm going to pause here for me, and I'll be back to you in a second. So, um, 
after a little bit of drama, we have a result for the 2050 election. And it was a very interesting one because two parties actually tied the Transhumanist Coalition and the incumbent uh, Galactic Future Party both tied and a special speaker who hadn't cast a vote thus far was needed to break the deadlock. And they broke the deadlock in favor of the Transhumanist Coalition, who it turned out had accidentally had their PR secretary sign the form instead of the party leader. And it turns out they've accidentally elected the PR representative. But the new party in charge is the Transhumanist Coalition with the head of uh, House Von Cryo, Wilhelm Von Cryo, uh, in charge. Their abbreviation is THC. And uh, the slogan is for a better, brighter and transcendent future. They believe in the power of AI and unlocking humanity's true potential. And they believe very strongly in scientific advancement. Uh, their policy for the next 10 years is going to focus around trying to stabilize the neutronium, working on infrastructure, and also on a defensive uh, military setup with some ships to be able to defend us as we go start unlocking these jump points because they could potentially be dangerous. Uh, so with all that drama sorted, um, I think... We should actually probably end the episode here, actually looking at the time. So, uh, if you have liked and you want to get involved with the political drama on the Discord, feel free to follow the links down below. Uh, if you want to see the setup video, go check that out. Also, if you want to like or subscribe to be able to like support the channel and the series or comment down below, um, feel free to do so. I, I think that we're probably going to have, in about 10 years' time we do the next election, we're going to probably open up submissions of policies for people to vote on that are going to start influencing things a bit more as the game starts to slow down. Uh, we've currently got two in, one of which is to change the voting method from a uh, multiple vote to being a single non-transferable vote and the other one to be able to transfer it to being a alternative vote system, which seems to be winning right now. So it's going to be interesting. For now though, I've been a Trilisium. Stay shiny.